then um, last but definitely not least is Jeff Ripp. He is the Division of Energy Regulation Administer at the Public Service Commission of uh, Wisconsin. And um, Jeff is a, a, a great guy with lots of expertise um, on Wisconsin utility issues. So I suppose you all want me to tell you what the answer for Wisconsin is, right? Well, I'm not going to do that today. Unfortunately, as you heard, it's very complicated. Um, the Public Service Commission is the economic regulator of the utilities in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, the Department of Natural Resources is actually the agency in charge of implementing the Clean Air Act and um, coming up with a plan really falls underneath the department's jurisdiction. But clearly this is an area that touches on both the air quality side and the, and the energy price side. And the commission um, has been working very closely with the department, both in analysis of the draft rule and putting comments into the EPA and as we today are analyzing the final rule. And really, in, in Wisconsin, I can't tell you if or even when we might implement a plan or if we do a state plan or a federal plan. There's a lot of different things. Wisconsin is part of this regional grid, part of MISO. Um, Wisconsin's also joined the lawsuit, lawsuit with other states um, in federal court challenging the Clean Power Plan. So at this point, there's still I have probably as many questions as you do about how this program would be implemented. But I think it's important just to kind of step back, and I wanted to provide today just a little bit of the types of things that we're thinking about as we're analyzing the, the final rule and the actual the federal plan that's been put out there as sort of a model and how that might impact Wisconsin. Um, I think with that, you know, one of the, oh, I guess. There, okay. Well, that's not it. I lost the Wisconsin component of this. Um, you saw the slide on the mix of generation uh, resources and, and uh, where that came from. This is a graph of the United States total. No. This is a graph of the United States total. That was the graph of Wisconsin. Um, on the whole, coal is about 40% of the U.S. generation mix. In Wisconsin, in 2013, it was about 60%. Um, that's a very significant chunk of our generation. That's just in-state generation. Um, we have about 20% that comes from renewables, some of it out of state, and about 20, 25% from, from gas. Based on our analysis of the draft rule, um, that component of gas could shift to as high as 60% in Wisconsin in order to comply with the Clean Power Plan. That's a very significant change. Um, one of the things that we don't understand how that would impact is actual the natural gas infrastructure, which JT hinted at. Clearly in Wisconsin, we use natural gas for home heating in the winter as well, and what that would do to gas prices is certainly a concern here in Wisconsin. So those are one of the things that we're kind of looking at that generation mix. Um, just looking forward, let's see if this goes. There we go. Um, we heard a little bit about power plant retirements. In Wisconsin, there's already about um, 1.5 gigawatts of coal retirements planned by 2020. These were announced before the Clean Power Plan. Many of these were the older units, the 50, you know, 60-year-old units. Um, they were not economically compet competitive in the market anyway. Um, and with the cost of pollution controls to meet other standards, they were going to retire. But we would expect that this retirement would also, um, there'd be additional plants that would need to retire on the coal side particularly if we decide to shift to more natural gas generation. Um, and that has uh, an impact on cost. Looking at what we have done to comply with other Clean Air Act rules in Wisconsin, you see this graph, this bar chart shows investment in pollution control technology. And really in the last 10 years, we've spent um, over $3 billion to reduce sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide and comply with the hazardous components of the Clean Air Act. Um, so we have made a significant investment in the coal plants that we assume would continue to run under the clean um, power plan. Um, but it's potential that some of those plants won't run as often. They maybe wouldn't dispatch in the market. Um, depends on when gas prices are. Depends on how much renewables are available. But either way, these investments have been made into the electric system in Wisconsin. And whether or not electricity is generated at these coal plants, um, ratepayers will have to pay for them. And so that's one of the concerns for the commission is just overall, 
what is the cost of compliance, not only adding new infrastructure, but also paying for the infrastructure that we've invested in. Um, and that's a very significant investment. I actually have a MISO slide, JT. Um, no problem. <laughs> MISO has a, a, a multi-year planning process to look at those transmission assets. And one of the um, more, more recent plans is this multi-value project. And these are projects that are just beyond reliability on the electric grid, but they're intended to provide some economic benefit um, to reduce costs of electricity. Primarily, this is moving renewable wind resources into um, Wisconsin and Illinois and places where the uh, renewable resources for generation aren't as good. Um, Wisconsin did implement the first MVP project in the MISO region. Um, it was a small project in southeast Wisconsin. The commission recently approved the Badger Cooley transmission line, which goes from La Crosse to Madison. There's another leg of that that would go to Dubuque from Madison. Um, you know, in the last several years, the commission's approved projects totaling uh, well over a billion dollars in transmission, looking to try to plan for where is that energy going to come from to supply, our, to supply us here in the state of Wisconsin to make sure we can maintain reliability. This is all sort of independent of the clean power plan. When you put the clean power plan on top of this, some of that uncertainty is there. Um, so clearly the commission's faced with making decisions on whether to approve these long-lived transmission projects, not necessarily knowing um, which plants will be in operation, whether the wind resources will be there. Um, so that's one of the challenges as we sort of evaluate the rules. Um, this isn't a slide that we're proud of, but um, Wisconsin now has among the highest electricity rates in the, in the Midwest. Um, the red line shows Wisconsin, the blue line shows the U.S. Uh, this reflects some of those investments we've made in transmission and, and in um, pollution control. Um, average residential rates in, the United, uh, in Wisconsin are now about two cents higher than their Midwest counterparts. Um, clean power plan probably isn't going to bring that down for Wisconsin, unfortunately. One of the other things that I wanted to just sort of show is to talk a little bit about how EPA set the baseline for Wisconsin. And the red line shows the uh, uh, emissions targets out with the interim compliance goals and the final compliance goals. And the blue line shows actual uh, CO2 emissions from Wisconsin. Um, EPA used 2012 as the baseline year. And if you look at this graph, we do have a spike that goes up in 2013. What happened in 2012 was we retired the uh, Kiwani nuclear plant and the Elm Road coal plant came online. And so the actual baseline in Wisconsin arguably didn't look like 2012 that they used. It, it, our, our generation mix was more closely related to 2013. What that does is it makes it a little tougher for Wisconsin to achieve the goals that EPA has set, set for us. Um, this, is a table that shows those goals. If you use um, the 2012 baseline, basically you need to get a, about a 33% reduction in carbon dioxide um, by uh, 2030 and 44% uh, compared to the 2013. The numbers are there. This is another way to sort of look at that, sort of that ramp down. The, Depends on your starting point, but starting at 2012, it kind of ramps down to the 2030 goals, and at 2013, um, it would be a little, a little bit steeper path. You know, based on the analysis that the commission staff and the Department of Natural Resources did on the draft rule, we estimated it would cost about a range of three to 13 billion just in Wisconsin to implement this plan. Um, we don't know what the final cost will be. Obviously, it depends on the path that we choose and and um, state planning or federal planning. And, um, but certainly we continue to analyze that. We'll be working closely with MISO. I know our staff have been working very closely with the modeling staff at MISO to make sure that we get a good, good inputs and good, good information that we can make decisions on. Um, so I guess the short answer is we have a lot to consider in Wisconsin, but you have to just stay tuned and be patient because it's gonna take a while for us to figure out what the right path is for Wisconsin. So, thanks.